So today my family decided to eat tacos. And I'm not a taco guy. So what am I gonna do? We're gonna have lamb. So first things first, we're gonna start off with our oven at 450 degrees. I got this lamb rack from Costco for about 17 bucks. And uh, I took the, well, you'll see this skin right here. You kind of want to take off that membrane. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, but it will result in a kind of chewy texture that you won't really love. I got my pan, which had taco meat in there. We're going to get going here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit this with a little bit of olive oil and then some pepper. I thought I was going to go salt first, didn't you? And some salt. And I like to put a little bit extra because when you cut into a piece of meat, we're not seasoning the inside of the piece of meat. So it's good to get that flavor in there. Do the other side. Shablam. Put that oil in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear our rack of lamb. That is not as loud as I like, so I'm gonna go a little bit higher on my heat. And again, I'm not trying to cook it all the way through, I'm just trying to sear it and get some nice color on there. And babe, how was your taco? So good, and there's so much more for me because you're not hot. Maybe I do like lamb after all. Psych, I hate lamb, gross. <laughs> now, you wanna take a quick look. That's some color there. If it's not like super colored, it's not the end of the world because we're gonna cover this with some breadcrumbs at the end of the day. Just make sure to get a good sear on all sides. It's beginning to smell exactly how I like it. The smell that Lindsay really hates. Ain't that right, babe? Good, cool. Now we're gonna let it rest. It's at this point that you take your oversized Fleur de Dijon, or thing of this from Costco. Take some, uh, maybe like a tablespoon, and what we're gonna do is while the meat is still hot, just slather it on. Cool. What you're gonna do here is finally dice your garlic. You could use a garlic press here, but I didn't feel like washing an extra dish. So I used the same board for everything. Once the garlic is nice and fine, you're gonna take out some rosemary and chop it down to about the same size. Pro tip here, if you don't want to buy a ridiculous amount of one herb, most grocery stores sell a variety pack that will give you a smaller amount of a variety of different kinds of herbs, but for the same price. Now combine your garlic and rosemary, season with a sprinkle of salt, and add about a cup of breadcrumbs. Generously coat your lamb with the breadcrumb mixture, pressing it into the meat for maximum adhesion and covering all the sides to ensure a consistent crust all the way around, just like this. It's at this point that you take this, and we're going to put it back in that pan that we had initially and try not to make a mess with one hand while we do it. There we go. Now you could cover the bones with some kind of tin foil so it doesn't brown as much but whatever. Rolo, I'm hungry. Add a little bit of extra oil, olive oil, just so all that delicious coating sticks and put it in our preheated oven 450 for around 10 to 12 minutes. Chloe is having a ball right over here. So one of the most important things you as a home cook could have is one of these, um, a thermo pen. What are these called? Thermostats? Thermo pen? Thermo thermometer thermometer a digital thermometer obviously it does exactly what it sounds like it does it makes sure that you have the right temperature on your meat I can't tell you the amount of times this thing has saved me when I'm cooking ribs on the barbecue when I'm cooking a roast in the oven uh, if you don't have one of these get a digital one they're just a little bit more accurate and um, yeah they're a lot easier to use at least so it's been about 12-ish minutes and we're gonna pull out our lamb. That crust is looking super crispy and exciting. I'm gonna bust out my Thermo Pro here. Remember not to take the temperature from the side, but try to get into the middle, into the thickest part where you can get the most accurate reading. We're at about 135, which is just over medium rare. We're good to let that rest. In the meantime, let's use some of that pan juice and stuff to cook up some quick veg for our side. You've got some frozen peas on hand and we're going to zhuzh it up with some lemon zest, some lemon juice, and also sprinkle in some mint leaves if you have them for a little added something something. 
Don't forget to season as you go, and by the time this is done, you're ready to slice your meat and plate. Shamo. There's that medallion piece. Awesome. Mm. You got the sharpness of the mustard. You got the crunch of the breadcrumbs. You get the garlic and the rosemary that we put in there. And I'm just eating the rest of it with leftovers. Got some mashed potatoes. I'm gonna have some happy days here. So enjoy. It's a really, really great dish.